morning. This is the fifth full day of Rohatsu Session Breakthrough at Yupaya Zen Center, Santa Fe. The most challenging day. Fifth day. How do I know? <laughs> because every day is the most challenging day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with uh, Shinzan Sensei, who teaches in Los Angeles in English and also in Spanish to Spanish speaking practitioners. One time, Shinzan Sensei said, Someday I will start a zendo called uh, uh, Siesta Zendo. <laughs> 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 I hope now your Zen Center has a more serious name. <laughs> you know, the drumming by uh, Shinzan Sensei, uh, when the food is first offered to the altar, this, really amazing, so dynamic and precise. And uh, some of you participating online may have been kind of enjoying the sound of uh, Zen practice, you know, large bell and small bells, gong, and then han, which means board in Japanese, so the sound of the board, kind of uh, before and at the beginning of uh, meditation sessions. And then, of course, uh, solo and then group chanting, all this kind of uh, music of uh, the practice. Some of you may remember, and some of, them, of you may not have been born or young. Uh, humanity was really uh, facing kind of extension of all people uh, during the time of Cold War. You know, nuclear arms race, uh, was escalating, escalating. All sides are ready to uh, shoot out all out kind of uh, nuclear warheads. It was such a horrible time. I was uh, in San Francisco serving San Francisco Zen Center as a scholar in residence. My third year, and I was kind of translating Dogen, also helping the first Dharma transmission that would happen in the Western world. So, kind of translating materials, uh, secret documents. Uh, lay people are not supposed to take a look. But uh, there was no choice. <laughs> um, and then when I was typing, I felt maybe this text will never be read. We may not have any readership. We know that uh, San Francisco was a target of a nuclear warhead in Soviet submarine. So um, we could be hit any time without warning. So 
I may not wake up in the morning. The world may disappear. So I talked to Bikaroshi, the abbot of uh, Zen Center at that time. You know, this Dharma transmission is very important. Maybe Dharma will last, but we may not have people to receive transmission. Maybe we should think about trying to save people. So he agreed to start a kind of a nuclear study group at Zen Center. And uh, that became an uh, action group very soon. And we did some ceremonies, um, vigils in some uh, downtown San Francisco, a demonstration, all kind of meetings, film showing, uh, inviting experts, uh, writing letters to Congress members and the White House, calling. We did everything we could. And every time we did, um, it didn't seem to work. Nothing seems to be working. Uh, the world is getting worse and worse, closer and closer to a all-out nuclear war. And then kind of uh, these um, two superpowers started negotiating with each other, reducing the number of nuclear weapons. And then all of a sudden, the world in Berlin collapsed and Soviet Union kind of ended to exist. And then nuclear arms race stopped. So there were still no kind of problems, but at least kind of we didn't have to worry about all out nuclear exchange. Then I realized that, uh, you know, every time we did something kind of uh, all kind of uh, things, uh, citizens exchange, and uh, I think uh, everything worked. Everything was a part of the big thing. Okay. Breaks was happening actually every time we did something small. So I realized that. Now we are in another kind of uh, big crisis. Maybe because of the climate change, humanity is rushing toward the kind of direction of communal suicide, kind of um, so. Um, how do we kind of reverse it. Um, I think many of you are working on that. I'm trying to uh, do a humble work, uh, planting trees in Amazon rainforest with indigenous people and the Brazilian people. And we're working together. Um, Uh, Christiana Figueres is a friend of Roshi's, and uh, she's from Costa Rica. And uh, United Nations Climate Conference in Copenhagen really failed. And uh, people felt that maybe because of the you know powerful oil exporting countries, and then conflicting interests, uh, nobody thought a serious international agreement on climate change would be possible. 
So the United Nations Secretary General asked uh, Christiana Figueres to be the chief negotiator. And then she wrote a book, um, The Future We Choose. It's a great book with her uh, British strategist, uh, Tom Comic. Uh, uh, Revit uh, comic, Tom. Uh, it's a great book. She really talks about her process. And then she would go to Saudi Arabia, kind of leading oil exporters, um, just listened. She only listened. And then it sort of came, became clear that temperature was rising in these countries. It's a real crisis for them too. So they should agree to cut down oil production and ex export and so forth. So in, uh, in the climate uh, conference in Paris, all the uh, nations over 190 unanimously agreed to sign, to make a promise, very kind of drastic, uh, ambitious promise to uh, cut down the uh, emissions and carbon levels on all that. So she's one of my heroes. And uh, she's, uh, she was the first daughter of Costa Rica. Her father, Jose Figueres, led a revolution and then won and then uh, demilitarized Costa Rica. So in my book, Breakthrough Costa Rica, Lesson for the World, which is bound to be completed this month. Um, and I said, what Jose Figueres did in 1949 is the most inspiring thing in human history. So we have two generations of heroes, <laughs> my heroes. And I had a great honor of sitting right next to Roshi John and then uh, Christiana um, in my birthday celebration, which happened uh, kind of two months before my 90th birthday in Atipaya. And uh, I was saying, you know, in Buddhism, we don't talk about being effective. <laughs> but I studied martial art, and then in martial art, kind of using the least force and get the maximum effort. That is essential. And uh, so to me, being effective is really important. And she said, how do you uh, be effective in climate crisis? Well, she's the world foremost expert on global climate policy. You know, how, what should I know? <laughs> but I said, well, uh, maybe developing language is essential, kind of making feel uh, everyone feel that to participate, they can participate, they can do things maybe that is visually kind of uh, effective and then feel that all, they all have to kind of participate 
whatever, whatever humble thing is fine. Humble is good. Humble is great. Uh, we need infinite number of humble projects. And that is the only way to reverse the crisis. So we can have a chain reaction of breakthroughs. That is, we don't know what it is. So we need to kind of pursue chain reaction of breakthroughs. Thank you, class. Good morning, everybody. So everybody can hear me well? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you for reminding us the fifth day in Sashin. Um so for me um be very grateful and honor to share this time with three wonderful teachers, Roshi John and thank you, Roshi and Ka Sensei. They have been doing Rohatsu for many, many years. Um this is just great opportunity. Um just want to share one of my stories. There are many, many stories. I can give a talk and all these anecdotes and stories and teachings um, outside of this end of seeing the way how these three great teachers approach to the practice. Very inspired. Um, I remember in one of those rohatsus, uh, so I was sitting there. And my approach to the, to the practice so in that time in rohatsu, it was to really great the breakthrough, really to achieve the awakening. This whole oh, rohatsu, and then I had to prepare myself and mentally and physically and go for it. No? And then, um, and that time, Cousin say, I think he say many times the world celebration. Maybe he have done many, many times introducing Rohatsu as a celebration. But finally, it was the first time the, that world really hit. And then it changed my approach to this practice. I could say, yeah, it's not about driving to achieve. It's almost like a graduation in the school. So you celebrate what you have done. So here you are celebrating what you really are. And, and my, my practice changed. So um, many times we hear the same word, the same sentence, the same paragraph. But every time, through the pass of the time, doing sasan, it gets different taste. That is important. Um, so the thing is breakthrough. And it has been wonderful talks by Roshi John, thank you, Sensei, Kosan. Roshi bringing the approach of caring, taking care of taking care of yourself, taking care of your mind, taking care of the world. Very simple act. Poetry. As a Shakyamuni Buddha being a poet, Dogen, obviously. Wow. 
and Enkiroshi, the lotus flower. How things are not separated. And cause and sense the small breakthrough and big breakthrough. Don't cheat for the big one. Pay attention in the details. Pay attention in the small. And obviously, what is on the air is about the topic of war. What just Kassen say been bringing out and yesterday was so uh, profound sharing about the libretto. The wars really bring us more and more awareness to really wake up. And for me, it's so important, this practice, and always has been important for, as we see by generations and in humankind, human beings, that from the beginning, from Shakyamuni Buddha, so we are here. And, and we are practicing for us, but also for the whole world. And I might share more and explain a little more how, how we can see that, that chain reaction that Sensei Kass is talking about. Sometimes in our practice, it takes so many, many hours of sitting to understand or to embody one word. How many times have you heard be present? Are you really present right now? <laughs> well, you're still figuring out your zazen. How many times have you heard, don't follow your thoughts? <laughs> don't believe your thoughts? Are you obeying them? The teachings? Can you really trust that very simple word? How many times have you heard, trust yourself? How many times have you heard, you are the Buddha? And we still, we are so stubborn. And we doubt. But you have to convince yourself that thought of doubtful thought is not anymore here. Because if you doubt, you have been left in the second day. You are here. Cass say this the hardest day, but I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe this day you start seeing a little glimpsing, glimpses of the beauty of this practice. Maybe uh, this day you start having some joy, some pleasant feelings. But the mind, the mind is so tricky. And then the mind comes and says, wow, this is so simple. Why are I in the, in the day two? I was not doing, I was not feeling that way. If this is so obvious. <laughs> so don't listen to the voice. Just practice is what is right now, right here in this moment. So, just to share about what we are celebrating, why we are honoring, how this thing is starting to happen, to come together. And Rohatsu, as many of you know, many people in this time that are sitting. I would say maybe thousand people are sitting. They're sitting in Japan. I'm sure that they're sitting in Mexico. They're sitting in Rio de Janeiro. In Europe, for, for sure. In LA, San Francisco, the Sahara. Name it. New York. Many people are sitting with us together. So we can create some kind of chain reaction the Sensei Kass talking about. 
And the story from the same perspective, same view, is goes this way. In the book of Transmission of the Light, say Shakyamuni Buddha saw the morning star and was enlightened. And he said, I and the gray air and beings simultaneously achieve the way. And that chain reaction started. And now we are here from that event. Through the great compassion of that human being, Shakyamuni Buddha, maybe he woke up and he just, um, I got it, so get quiet. <laughs> and, you know, and go with his life. We will not be here. <laughs> but no, he saw, because he's here, he saw the eye and the gray hair and all beings, all beings. And they were simultaneously. So we are equal. And the same time, beyond past, beyond future, we achieve the way. So that's what in the, the story of Roshi Enkyo mentioned about the lotus, the deceit and the moth is lotus. He saw, wow, we are not separate. We are intervening. We depend each other. So we are connected. So, and I'm gonna just mention it. There are many stories about that event and there are, you can Google it and find the, the sutras and the Kanonpali and the Theravada approach or story or the view of the story. Maybe if you read that, you will hear like a Shakyamuni Buddha enter into the first jhana, into the second jhana, into the third jhana, into the fourth jhana. And suddenly, or later, he realized the past lives on the Bodhisattva. And the story goes on and on and on and on. And finally, he had the perfect enlightenment. And we can get caught in these past lives. Um, I'm going to share what my former teacher, Samu Sunin, the Korean Zen teacher, when I started this practice, he answered when people ask about past lives. <laughs> and then he would say, why do you want to know about your past lives if you cannot handle this one? <laughs> <laughs> we just want is enough. <laughs> That's what I like. So the, I like. I prefer the version of Zen. <laughs> but with this, this so very interesting with the story is that the Buddha needed something to wake up. He saw the star. He had a relationship with the universe, so to speak. He saw the star. He didn't say I was sitting in Sazen and suddenly boom. No. <laughs> he said, I, you know, when he saw the morning star. So the breakthroughs, until now I haven't found it, the breakthroughs doesn't happen on the cushion. The breakthroughs happen in the ordinary life and relationship with something. Maybe we saw body. So we start, we need to learn to stop chasing that expectation that something is gonna happen when you are sitting in Sasset. Because it's not gonna happen anything. <laughs> That doesn't feel that. 
How does it feel that to you that nothing is going to happen to you? And so say, <laughs> we want something. That's the problem. So we are breaking through through this greed. We're still greedy. Be greedy. So this the, the, the greed is why we are in trouble in the whole war. With all this war, because they come in me, I need this. I need your resources. I need your land. I need your cheap labor. And we create war. Because come hate. The selfishness, the envy. And we fight. And the root is ignorance. Not to see the brotherhood or the sisterhood or the connection that we are so connected. We are coming from the same fabric, so to speak. And I'd like to share now, I hope that I have some time. To explore one part of a poem. And maybe you are very fam you are very familiar, or you know this poem, Fate and Mind, by the third ancestor, Sen San. Every, I think almost everybody knows the beginning, the great way is not difficult for those who are picking and choosing. So, but I'm gonna try to explore different paragraph of the poem. It goes this way. Let it go and be spontaneous. Experience not going or staying. Accord with your nature, unite with the way. Wonder at ease without vexation. Let go and be spontaneous. That's, that's it. Let go and be spontaneous. Experience no going and staying. Accord with your nature. United, unite with the way. Wander at ease without vexation. So Master Shengen say, just being natural, being natural, being yourself. So what is let it go? You have heard that word, we, we serve brand in Buddhism, let it go, let it go, <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> but what do you let it go? What is the it? What is the it? What is so interesting is, well, let it go your ideas, your beliefs, your self-identification with your eye. But here, let it go. Sometimes we get it wrong. Because you let it go something that you have. If you, have, if, if you don't have it, you cannot let it go. So to have it, sometimes we need to go into the acceptance of the experience and to the process, what is going on, and that we can release it. And instead to, I want to let it go, then pushing away. We are making it more complicated. It's about embracing. Thank you, Roshi mentioned about these demons. All our struggles, part of ourselves. 
but we let go of the the belief that this is me only. No, that is the other side. And to see this part of human nature, human being. So be spontaneous. What is a spontaneity? What is it? You can, if you are rehearsing, it's not spontaneous. <laughs> if you are practicing, it's not spontaneous. If you have agenda, it's not spontaneous. That is another way to say beginner's mind. It's another way to say not knowing. So we come to Sassen and sometimes we come already with the set of mind. I hope that I don't have this memory. I hope that I don't sleep. I hope something is so I hope, and then just when we mention it, we are bringing it. We are not being spontaneous. It's about this freshness, to find us freshness in the practice. So, Zen Master Shen Zhen, he said, the most important thing in practice is to be natural and spontaneous. Being natural doesn't mean neglecting everything. So for me, the practice is not to make my sasen routine. This so after so many years doing this practice, your body is so getting used to. Your body is okay sitting in this position. And even your mind say, okay, Shinsan is going to sasen, okay. <laughs> and then sometimes the mind is thinking that you are doing sasen. And you get seduced by that mind. And that is no spontaneity. If we can, you know, unhook from the familiarity of the practice, there is something there. Freshness. So that's it. for those who have been sitting for a long time to shake it out, that conditioning. And then to wake up. And to keep it alive, the practice. For me, it's, that is the practice, to keep it alive. Is that okay if I go a little, a little further? <laughs> you can adjust your posture. <laughs> so, go with this experience, not going to stay. Sparing, experience not going, saying, what is that? This to experience this timeless practice. To experience that whatever you achieve, you have to come back to see it again. I think Shohaku Kumura say, you never graduate from Sasen. <laughs> We never finish. So we come back. So this time is practice is when the reference points of past and future are gone. And the present becomes the impermanence itself. To see, to experience the no going and no staying is relative. To think that you are doing meditation is going. 
and to think that you are not meditating is a stage. So what are we doing? <laughs> so that's the question. Why do you sit? When somebody came to me and said, why sasem is so important? What is our core over practice? For me, Sassen, by not doing, you are doing a lot. Because I just really impressed by the life of Sensei Kass. Things they have achieved in his life as an activist, bringing the message of peace. How many books have written? That's the paradox. <laughs> Sensei Kass, you have many, written many books, and for me it's very hard to write just one Dharma talk. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that. Here is, is this paradox. By not doing, we are doing it. It's when the self gets away. But why Sassen? Hey, Sassen is sitting Zen, but what is Zen? <laughs> That's where you need to find out. So Sassen, we are doing Sassen for the sake of Sassen. And some teachers say this Sassen is good for nothing. <laughs> and which is totally true. Because we are so, in our minds, so capitalism, capitalistic mind, that this approach becomes like a, another homework to achieve. So, but the Zen is expression of your Buddha nature. The Zen is manifesting, is harmonizing with the whole universe, is being intimate with your life, is closing that gap that you've been separated from life. So the point goes with unite the way. Unite the way. You are coming together with the way. What is the way? What is the path? It's your life, your life itself. You are integrating. And we are breaking through this, this belief, this illusion, this ignorance of separation, the illusion of the other, the illusion of the opposite, and to see the wholeness of everything. And sometimes it's quite, quite um, difficult to see the teachings in everyday life. We still put in this spirituality like an ether or something up there. And I can tell you a story, just this machine, how we connected we are. And also, what does it mean to be natural? What does it mean to be spontaneous? What does it mean to be whole at the moment, at the present moment? I think it was yesterday. So we have a morning service. And Monshin, she has been doing the drum and the services. And Monshin, needed to be the officiant and then and then she asked me say could you be the drum and i said yeah 
So and then they start thinking, I said, I'm going to be the drone, I'm going to be the drone, I'm going to be the drone. <laughs> Not to forget that I am the drumming, the drummer. <laughs> Not to be the drum. Don't forget that you have to go to the drum. <laughs> and then I do the bows. And then the Bodhisattva Bonnie passing the Chankar, he say, you have to go to the drum. <laughs> Sometimes that happens with our practice. We want to get it right. We are so obsessed to make it right, to see properly, not to have pain. And all the things we are so obsessed and the, we forget the most important thing about to be present. I was not present. I want to be the drone, I want to be the drone. I'm going to be the drone, I'm going to be the drone, and then boom. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I went. I become spontaneous. Yeah, so what is this connection? The connection is we are in, intervening. We are this, in this chain reaction. Yesterday, it was, I think, yesterday too, in the Orioki. So, Kosan. Uh, did the chant quite ahead and then somebody laughing and then I get distracted and then I pick my second ball to get the, the tea when this would be the, the first ball and you know and then I went and pull because I get it, okay it's not the it's not the right time the <laughs> chant and everything and I went off And, and one mistake, it's, you know, it's something uh, quite funny, it's no big deal. But, and then Kosan say, and he repeat again the chant to make it in the right time. And then I get distracted too, I didn't bow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but this, we are, we are affected. When the same time we can inspire or practice inspire or believe or values, the most important is our values in these times and this war. That we can put a small grain of sand in the, in the peace, for the peace, this war is going on. And we are here just to end my story. And I like to share the story of in a council with Bernie Glassman Roshi in one of the Bering Winter Retreat in Black Hills. We were there in a council, and he was there sitting. And after several days listening the presentation and the stories of native people, so you get fired up about injustice. You get charged. So we went into council, and then a few of us we we jumping into solutions. We jumping into fixing the problem. And Roshi Berry say, no, 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 we are not doing this here. He said, here we are no knowing and bearing weakness. We are knowing the social action yet. And he said, he said, maybe there is no solution. But what I try to bring to you here is, is your sasen the rohatsu, this practice, we are bearing witness, we are no, no knowing. The social action is outside of the cushion. Through our relationships. Where we are going to start peace? We, we are start peace. It's a cliche. It's a cliche. We start with ourselves. We are making that peace in our hearts. And we are starting home with our families, with the relatives, with the neighborhoods. And then I hope that we can do for this nation, that we can wake, wake up. And that is the chain reaction that Sensei Kaz is talking about. So your Zazen is so important and your Zazen is so connected with the whole world. It's the Bodhisattva path. It's no, it's not about you. It's not this self improvement program that Roshi John talks all the time. It's more than that. 
No undermine your practice. Don't lose hope. And to end, I'm going to read the case and capping verse of the story of the Shakyamuni Buddha seeing the morning star. And Kaysan ends with a splendid branch issues from the old plum tree. In time, obstruction tones flourish everywhere. A splendid branch issues from the old plum tree. In time, obstruction tones flourish everywhere. Embrace your whole experience. Embrace all your struggles that you might be having now. Because those are the branches of the old palm tree that you're going to see, I hope, December 8th. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.